Bobo, what up? Gab, what's with the word? Try. I ain't even gonna say anything, bro. I hope all is well, champ. Waiting for hot five. Red Freeman. Lakers all day. Clippers out of here. Kawhi. Kawhi didn't I go to the Lakers. That's his name. Mr. Freeman is in the building. Yo. What's good? What up, son? What's good, big dog? How you, fam? Man, I'm chilling. I can't complain, gay. Can't complain. Anything good? Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Hungry the motherfucker gotta get some food, man. But I said, let me holler at my man real quick. You know what I mean? I appreciate you even taking the time to do this. You already know, man. I ain't gonna hold you up. You already. It's all good. Let's get to it. Uh, when 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 did you start hooping? Uh Say about like six, six, seven, six, seven years old, man. You know, I'm, you know, I'm from the San Recession of the Bronx, man. So that's all we did, man. Just pretty much who wasn't there enough for really popping. You know what I mean? Play a little softball here, little bullshit football in the street and all that. But you know, niggas was hooping, man. So yeah, man. When did it get organized? Um, well, you know, you had previous people on here before, man. So you know. You want hear you hear a lot of Kips Bay, so you know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. So Kips Bay is that's my that's why I started that man, Artie Green. I'm an Artie Green kid, man. So there you go. You feel what I'm saying? So uh yeah, organized balls with him. You know, he got me right, you know, watching him, then him coaching us, you know what I mean, me losing Isaiah, George Brown, PO, you know, total package, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, that's that's our little nucleus right there, you feel me? You know, yes. So so yeah, man. That's that's where I started at. So when 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 you picked up the rock, like initially it's something that's fun, but when did you realize like this was something that you really wanted to do? Um, I mean, even when I picked up the rock, man, you got you realize how many people came from the Bronx, how many people hoop, man. So as a young dude, you know what I'm saying, when I mean, you watching Billy Singleton and them guys playing back in the days when we were young. I'm watching all these dudes play, man. Trinity, there's a whole bunch of guys from the neighborhood, but then, you know, Ross Strickland and all the other guys that used to come around the neighborhood and hoop. I mean, that's day one. Once I seen them hoop, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm doing that. That's that's exactly what I'm doing. You know what I'm that's saying? It. I ain't had – it's like, you know, you really ain't got no choice at the time, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got some type of – athletic ability or you can do some stuff yo and i was a fan you know what i mean i watched it on tv all day you know what i'm saying so at the end of the day i was i was just stuck so did uh aau or school ball come first for you um it was almost pretty much the same time man because uh <laughs> same time i went when i went to middle school you know i had a choice of going to 123 which is right across the street from Fred, but then 174, you know, with, you know, P.O., Pistol Pete, all Isaiah, everybody else, all Holy Cross. And my mom took me to the Holy Cross, said, yo, we're going over here. Okay. So did that, but then played ball with all of them and Kibbs Bay, and we all did AAU things. So, you know, we was playing squad and all that, you know, young. young. Okay. You know, so at the end of the day, that's when playing with them and doing the AAU stuff with them, Propelled me to go playing with Gauchos because you know how that was. Gauchos Riverside, they lurking. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Where they at? Yeah, Kids Bay. Yeah, you know, Mini Sing. Yeah, you know, we who we grabbing from these teams? They was lurking. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah, they, yeah, that's but yeah, hey, you was early. Yeah, you was early. And you was traveling, or it was like or within the city. Within the city, within the city. But we we went a couple of places. We was young, you know, Boston, I think. 
Um, yeah, you got me going back. Shit, that's <laughs> I'm, one of, I'm one of those dudes. I swear to God, like Jack, like like TP told, like Jazz would remember everything. I'm like, how you remember this? Y'all remember yo, you, yo, you know, son, you took the shit out here in the street, like that. Like, yo, what? How you remember this shit? Like, how, you know what I mean? I almost spoke like you. How you remember all this shit? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, so um, now we traveling and we traveled out. Out of the city, and we traveling in the city too. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, I mean, again, all of the all of the like groups of like teams. I mean, we all seen each other. You know, what yep. I'm saying? that's why it's like you playing against Rain Reed and Shame on them at young ages. We all 10, 11 years old. We all seen each other. You know, <laughs> so it was nothing. As we grew up, we all been playing against each other forever. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So coming up was was the guard was the guard position something you always were able to play or did you evolve into it? No, I was always playing guard. Like I mean, that's everybody worked on their handle. Yep. Everybody worked on their handle. You know what I'm saying? I was tall. I was tall. I was slim, but I was, you know, we all worked on our handles, man. You know what I'm okay. saying? I ain't nobody ever told me I do no pull stuff moves. Got you. You know what I'm saying? As long as I if I can go rebound and bring it up myself. You know, Artie wasn't tripping. Nobody was tripping. They wasn't ripping me. You know, and when you're on the street, you know what I mean? We playing. That's what kids don't do right now. Like, back in the day, we playing freeze. You know, not like, you know, people say 21. We playing freeze. Don't free throws. Yeah. Okay. But at the time, you're thinking, like, you got eight people on the court. Yeah. That's what you worked on your handle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you got six, seven dudes trying to guard you not to get no points, whatever. Yeah. You yeah. Know? That's you know? a you don't, you don't see a lot of people outside of New York they call them Fat Daddy Boogies. You don't know a lot of Fat Daddy Boogies in New York. <laughs> All the big dudes that can handle, man. Everybody can handle. Them. You know what I mean? Got you, got you. Right. So, as considering the fact that when you came up, there was you were surrounded by killers every everywhere you go to play. You know what I mean? Of course. When you get into the school aspect of ball, you know, as young as you were, what was the what was the challenge for you? Going into the school aspect of ball because you know it's a lot different from the street where right. you don't have as much freedom to do everything the same way you might be doing in the summers. Well, um, middle school that was nothing because it was only me, so I they, they didn't let they didn't care what I did, you know what okay. I'm saying? I ain't had that many killers around me, got you worried about them, yeah, you know, or you know what I mean? So yeah. that was me. High school, differently, it was different because now I'm going to Harlem, going to Rice, you know what I'm saying. And my freshman year, it was like, oh, this is my joint. You Got know, you. That was so, Rice was a plan for you from a youngin? Nah, well, you know, again, like how people get recruited, right? I was yep. getting recruited out of middle school, just like yep. the other ones that was nice, you know what I mean? So, Rice, St. Raymond's, All Hollows, Hayes. Yes, sir. All, you know, I'm getting letters at a young age I'm doing that, right? Yes. So, so I, you know, St. Raymond's, of course, was a the school everybody figured like you know you nice you gonna go there or stevenson you know what i'm saying or stevenson you know in the bronx yes sir so you know my cousin my cousin went to rice i went to a couple of games where he you know, he played a little bit but that's when i started seeing ron Arnold play in harlem started okay. watching them play seeing jerry mccullough when he was young and his brother played on the team and i'm like but they was all on their way out. Jay was the only one that going to be there. You yeah. Know? So I'm like, oh, I can come in here. Oh, this is me. This is me. So I ain't had no issues or nothing. I'm, I'm like, I'm going and killing. Got you. And then my freshman year, that's what it was. Like, that, that's me. That's all my joint. You know what I'm saying? Big so, boss? No, so now nah, they made us play. And I went to JV. And he played freshman. I moved straight to JV. Okay. Um, they moved to Boston at the end of the season playoffs. You know, we, I think we got smacked by Hayes or something. Like, you know, we couldn't do nothing with management at that time. I didn't even get, I didn't even play, I didn't get on the court. Got you. Uh, I already know what it was, but I just knew after that. So, you know, that solved me. It came. I'm like, okay, yes, yeah, this is it. This is over. Now I get varsity, and then Philippe come. You know what I'm saying? And then Philippe yeah. has come. And then, you know what I'm saying? And Philippe came in as a freshman, oh, you know, English, whatever, but, you know, kids like that, you coming in at that age and you doing shit he was doing. Like, where you, where you get this shit? Where you learn this shit from? 
Like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> he's taking off. He doing. You looking like Mike doing shit. You know, he's going under head. Doing all yeah. this. Like, yo, hold up. This is this is nuts, man. This is no way. As a freshman, you know. Yeah. And like I said, all you know English. But you know, it was hard at one time. Like, damn. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, he was getting a lot of praise at the time, and I was still getting my praise in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. At that time, that's when I started playing at Rucker when I was 16, whatever the case may be, playing all these different spots. Yep. Still had, you know, vice, you know what I'm saying? So right there was me, Felipe, and Jerry McCullough. Jerry was going into his senior year. I'm yep. a sophomore, Felipe, a freshman. Okay. But, you know, you know, something was special about him out of the gate. Yeah. And after a while, I was like, all right, well, it was just me and him then. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it is what it is. Now it's this man, man. You know what I mean? I know I know what to do. Because our games was, you know, when we channeled our games, I was more of like playing like a magic in my mind. Because I like to, you know, pass and do all kinds of crazy shit. Yep. We was on some mic shit. I, I it's no fun of mine. I'll tell people to this day, like, yo, dogs. Probably when I was young, definitely was the best player in the city. Easy. Gotcha. Easy. No question about it. Yeah. Too athletic and... Just, just had a, just had something that was a little bit different than everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So yeah. So, but again, like, you know, after that freshman, my fresh sophomore year, he came, and junior year, that's when Gary Saunders came through, and mm -hmm. McKee, and we got you know scientific math, and we got Coach Lockhart, and we got Jamal Livingston, we got Jail Cox, we got Eugene, James, we got, you know, that's when it started getting real, man. So, you know, and everybody figured out their roles and what to do. You feel me? So um, that's why I was always, it was love. And then again, being in Harlem, going to school there, hanging out with Zig and, and, and all those guys in Harlem. So now I'm around Mace when he's a, when he's a baby, you know what I mean? And, you know, Cam and all them when they young and playing yeah. with Rich Park and all them. Now, you know, all the tournaments that we play young, now we in high school, now we all around each other hanging, whatever the case may be. Oh, we're going to play in this tournament over there. We're going to King Towers. We're gonna... So, you know, totally different, man. You feel what I'm saying? As far as just getting that atmosphere. You know, it wasn't nothing, it wasn't nothing wrong with the Bronx atmosphere, but, you know, all of us all. No, absolutely. At that time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's what you wanted to play. That's what you, mm -hmm. you feel what I'm saying? So, so, yeah, man. That was love, though. Love. When you got on the varsity level, was it anything? Was there anything you had to change about how you played, playing in Rice? Um, not well, you know, not necessarily because, again, I'm 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 definitely a student of the game. Anybody know me? I'm I'm I'm, I'm about that. You know what I mean? I'm gonna try to do what it takes to win the game. Period. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't really have to change nothing. You know what I'm saying? We already had our roles on the team of what to do. You know what I mean? How to do it. So I knew how to, like, say, okay, well, I'm playing Felipe's game in high school games, but then I'm playing at Rucker with Master Rob and them. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Absolutely. So you got to figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to figure it out. Yeah, you, you know, you one of those guys, too, as well. But you got to figure it out. Yeah. So, again, me, me being a student and learning and understanding how to figure shit out at the time, it, it wasn't even hard for me at all, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why I feel like the transition going to my senior year. And it was a – we had a great senior year, and we lost in the semifinals, man. Like, we, nobody could hit shit. We lost to Jamal, Jamal uh, Robinson, McClancy. And that was the year we were supposed to win it all. And then the next year when I left, they ended up winning it, which is good. I'm glad. Like, I always loved Felipe and G-Dogs and Gary Saunders did that. But, um, but, yeah, man, the transition for me – it was it was it was kind of easy, man. I ain't gonna front. Okay, so because you, me, and you around the same age, right? So I remember what what what, what the name Reggie Freeman was. You right. understand what I'm saying? Right, right. And it's like for the size you were at that time and the way you played, it was different. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was different, bro. It's it, it's what it is now. Right. You, right. You yeah, exactly. Saying? Exactly. You're playing at a young age. You're playing 16 years old in Rucker with Master Rob and all these legends, and you're doing your damn thing. Right. You're coming to school, and you got all these other alphas around you, but at the end of the day, the name Reggie Freeman 
doesn't stop ringing. You understand what I'm saying? So you were always able to hold your own wherever you went. What made you stay at Rice when y'all was fully loaded, considering that you go anywhere else and it's 30, 40 a game? You know what I'm saying? Ah, well, you know, at the end of the day, man, like, me being there and knowing what kind of team we had, got you. I didn't expose who we was going to have. So, yeah, you know, you just got, you like, there was a lot of people that left. Like, you're right. I know. A lot of people that left. Like, you know, a lot of people broke out. Headache left. Yeah. And we said, I'm out of here, man. You yeah, know, fuck you. Um, you know what I mean? What's my, what's my man? Um, my other young boy. A bunch of new boys left. And that, you know, because we had that varsity B team. They yeah. were good enough, but we just had a lot of dudes there. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Philippe averaged his 27 points, and I averaged my 19, 18 points. And then it is what it is. I mean, shit. I wasn't going to leave that situation because I already know the type of eyes is going to be on us. You know what I'm saying? We got that type of team. We're going to run through everybody in the city. We ain't trying. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you're supposed to do as far as, you know, we're trying to win a chip. Mm -hmm. We're trying to college. So you yep. need the eyes on you. You know what I'm saying? And what better eyes is going to be than to have Felipe playing with me as well? You know, my name was still good, but Felipe was the best player, the best freshman, the best sophomore, the best junior. Mm-hmm. Shit, he got people. He got people. D one joints that probably might have not got it. Got you. Just because of the exposure. What if we? What if he didn't play? Yeah. What if we were just been regular? You know, we still everybody been all right, but some guys probably wouldn't have went to certain schools. You never know. Absolutely. Because of the exposure. Yeah. You know? So when does that? When does that recruiting process start for you? Um. Well, you know, because we was playing well. You know, so it started, you know, sophomore, junior year. You start getting letters here and there and all that. But then senior year came and, um, you know, we had a, you know, we had the year we had. We had a real good year. We just, you know, came up short in that semifinal game. But um, I went to five-star. I got MVP in the all-star games. So me, Charles Jones, Keith Van Horn was a bunch of, like, dudes at that time. I mean, it started before that ABCD camp, you know what I mean? So, and that's every every all the nice things in the country. And there was me, Kareem, Philippe, Adelisma. I think I don't know if Shan was there, but it was a whole bunch of us there. You know, so I always, you know, again, I'm holding on, I'm doing what I am doing what I do. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um senior year when they started really coming around, especially after that five star thing, it's like, okay, well, now I got a choice of the letter. You know what I mean? Now it's not North Carolina, Duke and all that, nah. But it was, you know, it was Texas, it was Xavier, South Carolina, um, you know, good schools, man. Like, like a lot, a lot to choose from. You know what I mean? And then UConn came late. Okay. After it was with UConn, UConn at that time, I was thirsty. I was like, yeah, I, I, might, I might do that. And then I ain't passed that SAT. I was sick. Uh, <laughs> Ray Allen sign right there. Like, I ain't do it like Ray Allen was there. You know that story right there. Man. Yeah. Just think about that. But um, the story that is always told by my coach was, you know, Jim Beheim, uh Bobby Knight, a bunch of guys was up there at, at Rice watching us play. And my coach, Tom Pennis, came there. And you know, I think Jay, Jim Beheim said, yo, you know, Asked him, said, you know, I think you got a shot at Felipe. He said, I'm not here to see Felipe. I'm here to see him. Mm. Well, me and all that. So, yeah, that right there, you know what I'm saying? And then when he did that, you know, because I had these other schools, you know, all the coaches come to my crib and all that. But I think the main thing that made me think about Texas more is the way they played. And then, you know, T. Rencher being from, the, you know, from around the neighbor as far as the Bronx is concerned. Yeah. Always watching him. Seeing how he came back home with the burnt orange, you know what I mean, joints and all that. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Different. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we younger, you know, I'm two years younger than him. So you're thinking about at the time, he's playing the Castle Hill tournament and all kind of ill tournaments back in the days. And he's always, you know, there doing his thing. Yep. So I'm like, you know, it made sense. And after Pendens came and talked to my moms and everything, I'm like, okay, let me go check this visit. I went on an unofficial visit to UNLV. You know what I mean? You know how they back, well, still do it now. You know, they threw me a couple. I mm -hmm. said, let me go see me do this unofficial joint. You know what I'm saying? 
But then I went to Texas and I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Like just the space and the, you know, just the way everything looked. And then T Ranch was there. That was very easy for my transition for that because he's from where we from. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Made it easier. So that was it. I was like, yo, I'm coming out here, man. Gotcha. You know? And again, same type of situation, but this way it worked out. I was the only freshman that they signed that year. Okay. So I'm going into my freshman year, turns to the junior, BJ Tyler as a senior. Gotcha. So, again, in my mind, they out of there. This is me. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. When did it become a reality to the to, to that young kid from the Bronx that, you know what, this basketball is about to take me to the ultimate level of college sports? Like, when did that, like, sink in to a young Red Freeman? Um, but like, like I said before, I knew what I wanted to do because I seen the guys previously on TV always doing anything. Yep. Right? So that was the first thing. And then, again, seeing Terrence and these other guys play on TV, that made it easier for me to go to Texas. Got you. But then when I got there and seen the exposure we got, the way we played, I was like, oh, man. You know, when we went to the Maui Classic my freshman year. Yeah. We were playing against Kentucky. And, mm. you know, them big boys, it's like, oh, this is it. You know, once you see the ESPN joints and Big Vitale that you join, you're like, ah, oh, man, this is going to, I already know what it is, B. Yeah, yeah. Right? Right? And once I see, once I seen the stuff I seen on TV and I, I'm in front of it now, yeah, it's over. Now, mindset different. Now, I'm like, yo, this is, this is something that's going to, like, propel me. You know what I mean? And I always felt that way, even doing that in coming back home to the crib to see all the talent that we had playing in the street because they was all coming from college. Yep. Right? So right. And I'm, I'm keeping my eye on everybody, see what yeah. they're doing. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm thinking we all going to do this. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, man. So you get to Texas from the Bronx. That's it. You got your bags. You out of there. You away from home. You out there. Right. What was that feeling like for you, suiting up for that first college game? Because, like I said before, a lot of people go to Rice, and then a lot of people play that Rice. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And like you made the most out of your time at Rice. You're a legend, and in that building and in our city. Right. But in that building, you're a legend, and that's not easy to do. Right. So you're pretty much groomed by the time you get to Texas for the big stage. You've been playing the 55th. You played in, in, in the top league in the city of, of, of New York. But college is like, that's just, that's a whole different animal. You know what I mean? Right. So getting suited up for that first game in Texas, what, what, what was going through your what, what was going through your mind and what were your expectations of yourself oh, going into your freshman year? I, I, I remember the first game. I remember Midnight Madness. Mm. Even Midnight Madness, it was like you know, crazy just to see the energy that they, because they, you know, Texas is a football state, of course. Exactly. But, again, the basketball team was doing well, and they had some stars. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, you know, I was a little little nervous, but at the end of the day, I was the only freshman. Got you. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't have other freshmen to holler at on the team to be like, yo. Them older was like, yo, come on, man. You ready? Yeah. Talking about, yeah, I'm ready. You crazy? <laughs> and then again, again, you go back to me playing with Master and playing with all these older head dudes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the mentality was different because I've always played with older guys when I yeah. was younger. So yeah. me coming to Texas and now, you know, as much as I could be shook my mind my first game, young fella, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I started my freshman year, which is ill. Yes, sir. He threw me in the fire kind of. Yes, sir, right away. Like, so, you know, it's kind of, that was kind of ill. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't had no chance to be on some, oh, I'm shook up. I'm, I'm worried about something because yeah. got these older guys over here. You know what I mean? And mentality-wise, I felt like I was better than some of them dudes that were from Texas. Don't disrespect to them. Yeah. But my mind was, you know, Terrence and them got me. DJ Tyler yeah. is a different story, a different level. Yeah. Terrence, you know, but them other guys, I felt like 
I feel like I do something with them. Got you. I'm very confident about that. But again, not too much nerves. The only times I really had nerves, like the first first couple of games was not. But when we like I said, that Maui Classic. Yeah. When I went out there and we played Kentucky and all of them and now now, now I'm I was a little shook up. So that's different. You know, gotcha. now we not at home, we all the way out in Hawaii. You know, we win our first game, we play against Notre Dame, I think. We beat them. Oh, Monty, Monty Williams, coach mm -hmm. of the uh, Phoenix Suns. Dude. Yes, sir. Facts. Play them, beat them, and then we run into Kentucky. And, man, oh, man, Roger Gold was there before he transferred to USC. Got you. He was, you know what I mean? He was a big, big time at that time. And I forgot. It was, they had a whole bunch of people over there. But that's when it got different. Now I was a little sugar for that. I ain't going to fight. Gotcha. Ain't gonna fight. And then I think that that helped me after that after that game. It kind of helped me after the, during that season because so, we played against. I mean, you think about that season. My freshman year, we played against not the Fab Five, Fab Four, but they were still, you know, Weber got jabbed the year before. Yeah, yeah. So I'm still we still jailing and you know what I mean, Jimmy King, Ray Jackson on them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, so I mean. And like I said, I always show love to the older guys on that team. They they made me a better player mentally. You know what I'm saying? But but real re realistically, that that New York City street day that because there's no crowd. I was really like worried about. You know what I gotcha. mean? Really like 55th. That crowd is gonna make you some type of animal. Dude. Yeah. Um, even on the block of Sam, you like dumb niggas on the block gonna make you some type of animal. Got you, but just that that type of crowd, like fifty fifth crowd, was nothing like it at the time, man. So me being young, playing, especially playing with Master Ball, that was that's why I be saying like, yo, I learned a lot from him because mm -hmm. he he really like was not worried about nothing. Yep, he was always in control, man. You know what I'm saying? Got you. Yeah, be. So how 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 was your freshman experience at that level of basketball? Sure. How, how 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 did you how did you take it in that year? I I mean, I I knew a lot of what my my coach was telling me at the time. So you know, Rice had the little low. You know, we on the fourth, sixth floor, whatever the fucking shit was at, and all fucking ceilings was wild low. Yeah. So I get to school, I'm thinking I can shoot. I my coach said I got knuckle ball. I'm shooting it straight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm yeah, yeah. there doing different things a day. You know, I'm. Trying to dance, I'm trying to make fancy passes, which it was cool for me because I'm saying I can, I'm getting over with these dudes. They can't really guard me like that. Yep. I ain't learned the game. See, I knew the street game. I had to learn the game. Yep. So freshman year was a real learning experience as far as learning the game. You know what I mean? And and understanding how to play with certain guys that may not be ready to, for one of those master passes that I'm trying to do. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Play solid. You know what I mean? Make the right decisions like that. So. Um, but I think I did I did okay for for this for this for the simple fact that, you know, me me being a freshman be with a whole bunch of, you know, elder statesmen on on that team, man. Yeah. I, I think I think I did okay. Yeah. You know, and, and my coach would say the same thing, but he did tell me at the end of the season, if you don't work on your jumper, you're not playing. And he was about that life. Like he one of them dudes like if you go if you rebound and you can and you stay rebounding, he'll play the rest of the game because you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah. As soon as you shoot a three pointer while you're supposed to be rebounding and all that, he take you out, you're done. Got you. So he's about that life. Got you. So I already knew that after that first year, you know, I'm coming home, people see me, I'm in the park or wherever. And I'm shooting five hundred a day. Light, easy. Every day. I don't care if I'm missing eight or eight. I'm don't care if I'm missing a hundred, I'm just I'm throwing things up. Got you. From the point where when I got there my sophomore year, they started calling me Reggie Three Minutes. That's when I was like, yeah, nigga, it's over now. <laughs> I go averaging five points to 15. I said, yeah, buddy. Back. Yeah, man. So besides the jump shot, what changed as far as the game for you when you went back your sophomore year? Because you jumped a whole 10 points. Right. Like you said, you went from five to 15. Right. You know what I mean? Were you seeing the game different at this point because you understood what your coach is trying to explain to you, and now the game may be easier for you because of the way you're looking at it, and now you can shoot it, so you're more of a threat. Facts, facts, facts. It, it you know, I took everything he told me. We home, worked in the jumper. Then, I want to say that's the year we went to the championship in '55th. 
against any way you wanted. Mo Black, Speedy, mm. we went to the chip. Yeah. And, you know, Troy Tuesday. I mean, everybody's on the court at that time, man. Yeah. And everything slowed down for me, B. Everything. Got you. And I started feeling some type of way after that. Because right after that, I was ready to go back to school with my sophomore year. So I came back like, oh, yeah, this is different now. It's over. Now, now the jump is confident. Mm -hmm. Like, I ain't missing nothing. I don't care who's in front of me. I don't care. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once my coach seen that, now his confidence went straight up because I listened to what he was saying. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Terrence is, a, you know, Terrence is a senior. He had another kid, Roger Anderson. He was like the top scorer in junior college as a as a, as a point guard there. I'm the third now. I'm the third leading scorer on the team with these guys now. So now it's like, and they're looking like before they were they were. If I'm spotting up, they like I don't know if I'm getting it right now because he was yeah. crazy. To so sophomore, they looking like, yeah. So, so that I mean, it made it all the better, man. Like I said, that's why I thank my coach a lot because he instilled confidence in me. You know what I'm saying. And, and told me exactly what I need to do. You do that, you good. Easy. Got you. How'd you guys, how'd you guys do your sophomore year? All right, so I'll tell you, so first of so all, I went to the tournament all four years, right? Yeah, yeah. All four years. Sophomore year, we had a real, we had, we had a pretty good year. Um, went to the tournament again. We lost, so I, I'm gonna keep it 100. Every time I go to the tournament, we ran into some big stupid thing that was too nice, B. <laughs> One high with my freshman year, it was just too much. That's ridiculous. And then my sophomore year, Joe Smith. Uh-huh. Yo, like 32 and 24, some stupid numbers like that. Got you. You know what I'm saying? And after, like I said, after a real good season we had. Yes, one running the TC dudes that was like number one picks or number two, three picks in, in the in the draft, like, Thanks. and we win the first round easy. Yeah, you know I mean? and the game's over like shit. We was up on Maryland, like two minutes left. I hit a three to go up like one. Mm -hmm. Some shit happened. We lost the game. I'm like man, I'm tired of these babies we gotta play against. We gotta get a better <laughs> 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 shit, bro. <laughs> that first NCAA experience, what was that like for you? A kid from the hood that's watched it on TV yeah. so many times, and you there for the first time ever. Yeah, that was that was down that. Now, I wasn't scared about that at all. That was fun. Okay. Now, that's fun. You know what I mean? Like just the like you said, the exposure they they saw in love. You see it on other teams. You might see some dudes you know. You know what I'm saying? That on, on, just it was fun, man. And um. Again, being with the older guys, you got to grow up a little bit quicker with them. You know what I'm saying? They move how they move. You know what I'm saying? And me have me me having Terrence there made it real easy for me. B, you know what gotcha. I'm saying? So yeah, that first experience, and I forgot who we played that first game. I think we played West Kentucky. Yeah, we played West Kentucky. We beat them first round, and then ran into Michigan. And now that was so hyped too, because you know, and I still got like. I took a picture of screenshot. That game was on, it's actually on YouTube and shit. So, and I'm starting, and I'm starting against the, you know, the Fab Four. So, you think, yeah. you know, the year before, I'm watching the, the Fab Five play. Sure. The next year, I'm playing there against you niggas in the tournament. It's just shit crazy. I'm like, uh, what? I'm going to Jalen Rose off the tip. I'm like, yeah. y'all, this shit crazy. <laughs> Got two fouls real quick. Come on out here, young fella. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, cause cause now not scared, but too hype. Yeah, too hype. Got you. Too hype. Too hype. Got you. Got you. Got you. Because so you come back your junior year, and you up them numbers again. Right. So right. that junior year is when it started looking easy. Yeah. I ain't even gonna hold you, yo. <laughs> It started looking easy. Like, it was like, yo, but he's doing the same thing out here he's doing uptown. Like, right, what, yeah. What changed for you that much? Yeah. Going the, into your, your your junior year. Yeah, the, the shit got open a little bit. Reigns got open. You know what I'm saying? I have a 15 sophomore. Terrence is gone. Roger is gone. You know, we bring in a McDonald's All American, Chris Clack. We bring yep. in the best players in Austin, you know, Chico Vasquez. We got 
white boy jumps through the brain pyramid, but the team is around me. Yes, sir. And he trusted me. See, I guess, you know, college, yo, man, listen, man. I tell everybody, Jamal Robinson is one of the best players I've ever seen in my eyes. But if his coach ain't trust him, that's what made Jamal Robinson not the player that he was supposed to be in Virginia. Got you. That's you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Coach had to trust, man. And Coach P trusted me after that sophomore year. I'm going to build a team around you. Or oh, they just going to have to take your spot. You going to let them do it? Oh, you know that's not happening. Yeah. So they now here we go. You know what I'm saying? And I could, you know, I'm playing a one, two, three, four, whatever. Yep. You know what I mean? Rebound, I got it. You go. I got it. You know what I mean? Because yep. now I don't know what to do on the yes, team. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, and the, the thought process of that, what well, I thought when I first got there, I said, yeah, this is happening. It's coming to fruition now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, yeah, it was, it was fun, man, because – now, you know, I'm playing against all these dudes that's supposed to be this All-American. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. I'm going right at these neck. And like you said, I'm coming up doing the crossover high fives and all that. Yeah. No games. Facts. It's hilarious because, you know, I come home like, yo, I can't believe you did that shit. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, it's different <laughs> now. Oh. <laughs> that is different. I told him, say, it's different now. B. After every game, I'm getting a call like, yo. You just had to, yo, yeah, we was talking, me and my man was talking about it earlier. You know, y'all had put that pitch up against Providence. Yeah. That, that's my junior year. I had 37 that game. Yeah. Uh, Sham God. It was Sham God, Corey Wright, Austin Cozier, Jamel Thomas, all of them. Yeah. Bobby Gonzalez was the assistant coach. Got you. He was my assistant coach in high school. Got you. I said, man, you don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, he He's getting it. <laughs> Oh man, B, for real, man. So that it, it, it was just, I got free reign to do stuff. And again, my coach said, "You can do it, do it." You know what I'm saying? Got you. Two threes, you do it. You can create for yourself, do it. You know what I'm saying? And I put the work in. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was fun, man. That was fun. That's when I started. I started getting recognition after my sophomore year, but that was when like shit started popping off. And that's what I, I, you know, what I loved it and I hated it too because this is when Felipe was doing his up and down shit. And they <laughs> always wanted to compare us. And I'm like, no, that's different. Yeah. Felipe had over three coaches already. Yeah. You can't count that, dude. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? They, they try to do that shit so much. I always try to be like, no, 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 no. I got it twisted, dude. No, facts. I said, that you go to the tournament that year, who y'all play? We played, uh, so we beat Michigan mm. that first year, tracked the trailer and all that. Yeah. Had Lewis Bullock was shooting the jump and all that. Mm -hmm. So we smacked them up. Then my then the second game, we run into Tim Duncan. Wait for it. Is how, yeah, you see how stupid this shit is, B? <laughs> Another big one. Juan Howard, Joe Smith, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. Are, you, are you fucking kidding me, B? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. But like, I you know I I I, I had like some of the highlights of the game. Like we we was, we was busting it, we was killing them, we was winning <laughs> most of the game. Yeah. The, until the end of the game, you know what I mean? And again, Tim Duggan, he's the defensive presence, man. I had hit my man with a pass to go up three with like ten seconds left. He missed. Instead of dunking that shit on his ass, he mm. missed the layup. Got you. And, and they came down. They, we fouled them, came down, free throws. We had to throw some long stuff, game over. Like, but it was like, damn, I'm getting cursed right now with these big dudes, man. Yeah. Facts. And I'm leading the, tour and I'm leading the tournament in scoring. Mm -hmm. All that. Yeah. Like, to the point where my mind's like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of here. I'm, I, ain't, I ain't coming back no more. Yeah. We, we, I know a lot of people that did think you was going back. I'm but I ain't gonna lie to you. My mindset was, that's like you have remember Carmelo. All of them these were still playing. Yeah, the game is totally different now. Cool. I was too skinny. I, whatever I was getting away with in college. Yeah, I felt like I needed to bulk up because them dudes putting hammers on people. V facts. You know what I mean? And my mind, I'm like, I get one more year to bulk up a little bit, then I'm straight. You know what I mean? Because I definitely could have. I definitely could have did that. And that's that year. Kobe, AI, Ray Allen, mm -hmm. John Wallace. That's that year. Yeah, man. So I definitely like you know, 
you look back at it now, he's probably I probably could have did that. But you know, the times have changed. The game has changed. Like you okay. said, the game is totally different. You were playing this basketball. I, I would have left after my freshman sophomore year. <laughs> you was playing this basketball in the nineties, fam. Facts. Facts. You so you come back for your senior year, right? You've gone up every year. Right. You come back for your senior year. What's on what what's on your mind? Get past the, the second round of the tournament, really. I'm thinking like, yo, the teams that we got and the talent that we got, we can do something. You know what I'm saying? Especially, you know, Clack is another year, you know, got another year under his belt, athletic freak, that he can do everything. You know what I mean? We got we got some other big men that came in, junior college guys. I'm like, man, we could do something crazy this year, man. You know what I mean? So that was the mentality because I never had NBA drive and nothing on my mind because I already felt like I'm already on the board. Yeah. So I didn't even have to think about that. I was on the board already. Got you. So it was more of like, yo, we got Vince Carter coming up. We got, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? We played we played some teams that year, you know what I mean, with a yep. bunch of NBA, you know, royalty. You feel yes. what I'm saying? Chauncey Billups. We in the Big 12, Paul Pitt. Mm -hmm. You know, so now it was just like, Okay, I see the matchups is going on. Let's do it. That's all it was, really. Like seeing it, it was like, let's get through it. You know, we're gonna do good, and let's get through this tournament and see what's up, man. You know I mean, because I just felt like you win the tournament is like everybody eats, just like I was felt like in high school. You yep. know what I mean? We win this, everybody eat. Absolutely. You know, so that was just the mentality. And then again, that year before, I went into my senior year. Shit, we went to. I think we was almost like oh, we supposed to win. The, we won Rucker that year. I left. Dana Dingo and Total Package was playing with the posse at that time, and something happened to the point where we were supposed to win it, but they took it back. But anyway, mm -hmm. I just seen stuff building. It's everywhere. And the street was building for us. For the posse was concerned. It was building for yep. me. It was like yo, love. It was it was it was love, man. You know what I'm saying? And that senior year showed out again. Yeah. You, yeah. You Dude, you went out the way, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, so how much easier was the game by the time you get to your senior year from that freshman kid that came from the Bronx right. the University of Texas? Oh, nah, everything slowed down. Everything slowed down, Lee, because, again, I'm bringing street to some organized shit that you wasn't supposed to. Now, when I started, when I got older, now I figured out when I could bring it out. Got you. You know what I'm saying? I figured out. I figured a lot of stuff out. You know what I mean? I, yes. you know, I learned the game a different way. If I'm running pick and roll. I got a big dummy on me. Oh, yeah. Here we go. This mm -hmm. game is on me now. Here mm -hmm. we go. I'm about to hit him with sun. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're going to like it. I know they're yes. going to like it, but I'm. But it's a move to get me pause somebody to make a play. Other than <laughs> trying to be fancy, do something. No, it's going yep. to work because his feet ain't ready for what I'm about to do. Exactly. And I'm going to go make a play for myself or somebody else. That's the difference. When I was just trying to make somebody look crazy, I was looking crazy because I didn't know what to do afterwards. I After, was yes. call somebody and throw up some bullshit. Like, yo, what are you doing, young fella? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Different. Different mentality. So that senior year, take me through that. Tournament. Tournament. So, you know, good year. You know what I'm saying? Uh, first team all Big 12. You know, me and Chauncey Billups. Say that. Think great for friends. You know, I mean, great year for me personally. For the team, good. We got a crazy seed. We play against, um, who was the first team we played? Uh, oh, Wisconsin. Okay. Go against Wisconsin. They had a big white kid, Sam Ogie, some they had, they had some. They had a good team. They always had a good coach. It was always a good team. You know, you, that's one of them teams you're scared to play against because they're coached the right way. They're playing yeah. the right way. Um, but we went at them. We were just out the gate. We trapping them. We full court pressing them. And you know, no disrespect to them, but them boys wasn't ready for that. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't ready. And I hit, hit them with 31 out the gate. So I'm starting, <clears throat> starting. I'm starting over again out the gate. And then. Um, Play the next get next next uh joint, South Carolina played against uh what's the name of that team Coppin State and we all had our mind that B J Mackey a bunch of these dudes South Carolina was a good team 
Mm -hmm. How they beat the black school, you know what I'm saying? Yep. You seen the dogs they have, but can they beat South Carolina? You know, South Carolina top twenty five in the country like us, you know? Yeah. Man, Cobb State. Right, write them right down. <laughs> Get them out of here. So now I'm thinking, oh yeah, so I'm getting past the second round now, boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, man, yeah, we hype too. You know what I mean? Then we playing against these dudes, man, and I must respect to that coach and that team. Mm -hmm. They had a kid named Kareem Lewis, matter of fact. He's from Brooklyn. He played on that team. But a whole bunch of, like, Philly area type dudes. Okay. My mentality wasn't understanding, like, them dudes dogs. Yeah. So at the gate, they was out. They was on our ass. Oh, man, we go, yeah. man. But nah, B, they ain't got no big hell no. <laughs> so I think I, I, I went off for, like, 20 straight on the ass second half. Okay. Close game. You know, we played some good D at the end, but it was a close game, but I respected them after that. Every time I, I'm still friends with a couple of them dudes to this day, man, because that's you. You know, and, and again, I started learning Philly basketball and, yep. you know, learning how nice them dudes was. Feel me? Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So definitely respect to them. You know what I mean? So got past that. So now I'm past the second round. I'm good now. I'm like, yeah, man. And I'm leading, I'm leading the tournament scoring them. Yeah. Yes, sir. And we went into Louisville. We played Louisville earlier in the year. They hit a buzzer beater that shot the ball right after the, the buzzer sounded. So it was controversial. They talked about it on ESPN and all that. So I'm like, all right, we owe them. Yeah. And we played at, we played in, at Syracuse in the Dome back then when they had the Dome and all that. Area Dome. And, yo, dogs, and I tell you, and yo, know, if, if and the game's up there, like you watch the game, I ain't played bad. I couldn't, you know, we could not make nothing be. Mm. It was this small, man. The members this small. All the shots, all the everything was just like, yo, I can't believe this. And we winning. We yeah. smacking them. We killing these dudes, right? Yeah. And then my man Alvin Sims, man. There's Alvin, this kid ain't Alvin Sims, about six five. They had him playing the force at the time, but he jumped. He's a two-hand dunker. Just and he had his best game of his, his life. Got you. And uh, lost a close game to them, Sweet Sixteen. Okay. Because we beat Carolina earlier that, in, the, in the season. Got you. And we'd have beat them. We would have seen Carolina again with Vince Carter and them. Got it. I felt like, man, the votes of the Final Four was like, man, <laughs> you got this, man. And then, then, you know that shit popped off, man. So, but uh, I say, all in all, man. Like, you know, other than that last game, man, it was it was a good season, man. And, you know, that was the best run we had with the team that, you know, you know, shit. We, only, we never made it past the second round the whole four years. I was in the you. you know what I'm saying? Sure. So, felt like we did something, you know? Yep. Yeah, man. So, considering the fact that your numbers went up, you improved as a ball player every single year, you're done with, you, you're done with your career at Texas, what's on your mind for the next step? I mean, the next step after that was interviewing agents, figuring out, okay, who I'm going to let take care of this business. Got you. Um, I mean, that's, I'm going to be honest with you. After the tournament was over, I'm doing interviews, so I'm not even in school no more, pretty much. I'm mm -hmm. pretty much stopped out. Yeah. Because every agent that I interviewed said, well, you know, we got to start working out and getting ready. You know. Got you. The cows were you know, Phoenix for all these low pre jab joints and other vacation may be. So I ended up signing with Andy Miller uh at the time. Okay. Andy Miller at the time, Andy Miller, Eric Eric Fleischer. These two dudes had K G, John Wallace, Steph, you know, it was like Sham, yep. Chauncey, Gordon Malone, Otis Hill. Got you. I'm like it just kind of made sense. Okay. And, you know, again, now now we go into, we doing the workouts, we getting ready for the draft and everything may be. And now I, I, don't, I don't tell too much of this, but I told one other interview I did. But at the end of the day, man, I, being young, I'm working out up there. We doing individuals in the morning and all that. But me, I want to come back home and hoop, man. Because I hate just doing this individual one-on-one -on -one shit and all that. I want to go home. And who we in Connecticut living over there in Stanford. Okay. I got the vehicle. I got the vehicle, and I'm going yeah. to I'm going to the clear. I want to hoop, man. There's it's runs going on and all this stuff that I'm working out, we're learning all that. I wanna go. But this is me. Yeah. Instead of listening to them saying, Well, 
you know, you don't need to do that. Sit tight. We worked out an hour, hour and a half, two hours, and that was it. The rest of the day, we were sitting around. Got you. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I know me and G Malone were on the hoop. I'm the oldest one on the hoop. You know what I mean? We always talking about it. But yeah. I'm like, man, I ain't, man, I'm out sometimes. I'm out. <laughs> so, you know, so me and me and the agent kind of butted heads a little bit about that. And then it was one scenario where I had some, some of my peoples from the crib. They came down. It was a, like a playoff game. It was like a double, triple overtime game, whatever the case may be. And they, the game wasn't over until like 1.30. So they left. And the agent seeing them leaving and thinking that I was, I was with them. Mm. But I ain't go nowhere. I was in the crib because we had workouts in the morning. Got you. So morning come, they wild and he talking crazy to me and shit. I'm telling them, oldest of my roommate, I was like, yo, he was right here. You know, I don't believe that. I seen you walking out. So now, here we go. Now, now the uptown shit, like, man, get the fuck out of here. I don't need you now. I'm going to get drafted anyway. That was it. I don't need you. I'm good. Got you. And I wowed out. Got you. I'm bugged out at the time. And then, um, so I ended up finding him. Okay. Two weeks before the draft. Mm. You know, and like, you know, again, and every all these guys like Sham on them, they be like, man, why did you do that? Because at the time they was hot, they was hot. Got it. Right to the point where none of us went to do individual workouts to a team. We never flew out to a team to do individual workouts. At that, that was the first time ever where he told all the coaches, or no, all the GMs, come see us. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? In a scheduled workout. Got you. Nobody's ever done that like that. Got it. So, you know, how their mindset was, like, they big time. Agent tweets before the draft. And I sat there, watched the draft. I had, I think we had, like, NBC at my crib. Had a couple people at the crib. Master all the dudes at my crib and shit, like, and them first round, second rounds came. I said, man, I fucked up. And I knew it because yeah. I left. I left. I left in the middle of the second round. Like, man, I know I, I did some bullshit. You Got it. I mean? You know, it, it, that's why I even, it didn't even hit me like that. Yeah. Because I knew. You know what I'm saying? Got it. It would be different if I did everything the right way and I didn't get, get the opportunity. But Got I know it. I did that. You know what I'm saying? And so after that, you know, I'm free agent now. Go to go to uh, Milwaukee, go to Dallas. You know, yeah. get out, get opportunities to rock. You know what I'm saying? And everything was like, you there? You good? You supposed to be here? It's a numbers game. Blah blah blah. Political shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So some league, what they do? They put me at the point guard, the playing point. I got Gerald Honeycutt. You know, I'm playing with Milwaukee. I got Gerald Honeycutt. I got. Dell Demps on the wing. I got these older dudes on the wing. I'm one of. I'm like. I'm a score. Let me score. Yeah. But you also can ball hand and ball hand and pass the rock. Yeah. And you also control a team. We see. You know what I mean. And for this team, we need. We might need you for that. Oh my god. god. You know what I'm saying. So, it was ill, man. So once all that shit happened, the political stuff worked. You know, worked and did what it did. I decided to say, yo, I'm out. You know. I'm gotcha. out. I'm out. You know what I mean? Let's go get some money and go. Let's go play somewhere. And then they'll see me over there doing what I'm doing, and I'll get grabbed back. That's the mentality it was. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Well, you get out. You, you get out overseas. Not gonna go through everything because you know you had a, you you had your career, and it's too much to, to, to fit into this. But that first pro experience, what was that like? For you? Oh, I was thirsty. I was I was thirsty. I was super thirsty. I think my first year I went out there, I went played in Turkey. Okay. I, I was thirsty. I'm like, it was one of the big leagues. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm like, I'm going out here and just kill these dudes. But then, again, basketball, you know, you might you might do stupid shit because your street mentality sometimes do some dumb shit. Yeah. But basketball always had me in line to do the right thing. So I'm learning how to play their type of basketball. Now, we're playing against – no disrespect to nobody that played in little small countries. At least go get some money. Yeah, playing these countries where these dudes is looking like they can play in the league, gotcha. but play differently. You notice how Jokic and all these dudes play; they got a different mentality of basketball. Totally. You know what I'm saying? The American go over there 
when they ass get tight at, and you know at the end of the game, then that's then now you do your job. Yeah. But during the game, don't get it twisted. These dudes, they do know how to play. Yeah. So you had to figure that aspect of the game too. You know what I'm saying? But I was, I was learning and I was killing at the same time. I was thirsty. I'm like, man, I'm gonna go over here, kill, get as much money as I can, and I'm gonna go back to the league, go back to summer league or whatever the case may be. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah. And the experience was good because, you know, you know, like you said, we don't talk about the whole thing, but living in Europe, oh, like, I did 13 years in that shit, man. Exactly. So, you know, a lot of people can't say they've been to the countries I've been and lived, <laughs> actually lived at, like, you know, rock star status. And so, did the damn thing in every country. Yeah, yeah. So right. that, that's what I'm saying. That, that, that part of it was love, you know what I mean? That part of it was super love, man. And to this day, I still talk to a lot of people that I played with and against over there. You know what I mean? Yep. Respect, just respectfully, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, I respect them. I, I played in Serbia, Yugoslavia, where Jokic is from. That's the place they retired my jersey at. Yes, sir. There you go. Legend. You know what I'm saying? Legend. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, love. Like, that's what I say. Like, you know, I, I can always think of back and say, oh, you made mistakes here, you made mistakes there. But, you know, I did I did my part. To, you to, lived a lot of ball players' dreams, my dude. Yeah. Regardless of what, you a legend you put on and in every situation you've been in, you perform. Facts. That's Facts. just what that's just what a ball player needs to do, and you did that. Facts. You know Facts. I, mean? I got four minutes left. I ain't gonna hold you. I know you're hungry. What's <laughs> what's what's life like for Reggie Freeman in 2020? Um shit. I'm trying to get back. You know, I was coaching junior college for four yes, sir. years. Um had a uh tragedy with my mom's so mom. My mom's my brother passed, you know. Yeah, that. God bless. So I had to fall back from doing the coaching thing for a while. Gotcha. Um, and then uh, after that, you know, mentality-wise, I want to get back in. I want to get back in. It's not the easiest thing to just jump back in. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, college coaching thing is, is tough, man. It's yeah. tough. In a match. Right place at the right time and everything like that. So that's my thing right now. So, you know, this is stuff like that, the basketball stuff. Yep. I had to figure out, okay, well, I'm working my way to get back into coaching. What I'm gonna do, you know? Mm. I'm working at Dell right now. You know, I'm, gotcha. I'm, doing, I'm doing tech stuff right now. Okay, I've never done nothing like that in my life. Got you. It still fries my brain. Yeah. <laughs> but still, this is something that people could do if they don't. If they never, you only had no career. This is something that's gonna make you a lot of money. Right. They learn it at an early age. Stop trying to think you can chase that shit when you ain't that good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Early, like you know what I'm saying? Yep. That's uh -huh. what I've been trying to teach young fellas like all the time, man. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, Always sir. a message in this shit, man. Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Freeman, I appreciate yeah, you, know. you, Reg, man. Uh, honey, I appreciate you for taking the time out. I salute you. You a legend, an icon, and you one of the goats of our city, bro. Always love you. And appreciate I appreciate you. Doing you. And keep doing your thing. Keep doing your thing. I love that you got my dudes that come on there. You say body wine. You had my man. You had a bunch of dudes on. I said, y'all got to go. That's my man, Joey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, no, much love, though. I appreciate you, yo. Salute. I appreciate you, my dude. You stay blessed. You already know. All right, baby. <laughs>